The mediator design pattern is a behavioral design pattern that decouples the communication between objects. So ultimately objects are gonna be able to communicate with each other without having to directly reference each other. And this is super beneficial because it typically centralizes communication between objects in one spot, the mediator, and it also allows us to easily extend communication to other objects in the future by just going through the mediator and not having to create or deal with some kind of spaghetti mess. So in this demo, we are gonna create a spaghetti mess by not using the mediator pattern, and then we're gonna leverage the mediator pattern to clean up our code and end up with a more extendable and maintainable solution. So first off, let's walk through this demo. We're just gonna straight up run the code. So let me throw down some breakpoints and we'll step through this. So the first thing we get is enter a number corresponding to the following command. And the only options are one to sign up or a nine to exit. So we're gonna exit, just kidding, we're gonna sign up. So let's press one and it's gonna ask us for our email. But actually first, since we pressed one, we're gonna enter this sign up script here. So let's step into that. And here we go, we're gonna run the sign up script. And now it's gonna ask us for our email. So let me just throw in something fake here. Whoops, I need to put my breakpoint back. And let's enter this. So it's gonna take that email, create a new user, and user is just pretty basic object with just this email property that we take through the constructor. So instantiate the new user, and then add it to this list user script. We're gonna print successfully signed up, and then we're gonna run the list user script. So let's continue. And running that list user script, all it did was just print out all of our users, which included the user that we just added. So if we look at our console output, we have our users, test.gmail.com. We also see we successfully signed up, and then we return to the beginning and we can enter another command. But basically the key with this app is that I want this list user script to run every time our user state changes. So whenever we sign up, I wanna run this script. And extending this application, there's another script I wanna run. So in addition to showing all the users after we sign up, I also wanna run another script that'll show the newest user. So we'll be able to keep an eye on and celebrate our newest user. So we're gonna have another script for that. Let's add a new item. So we're extending this application. Let's see how this goes. We'll call this the newest user script. Similar to the other scripts, it's just gonna have a single method to run the script. We're gonna have a header similar to the list user script, where in the list user script we say users, but for this one we're gonna say newest user. Similar to the list user script, we're gonna have some padding around the script so we can easily see it in our console. And then we're simply going to write out the newest user. So we're gonna to have to get that in this script. So we'll just have a property up here for a user, the newest user, and we'll just make it a public getter and setter. So let's import our user model and reference this property. So now we just need to run this newest user script whenever we sign up because we wanna run these scripts whenever the users in our application change. And we'll also have to update this newest user property as well. So first off, let's add the newest user script in our signup script, since this is where we trigger these scripts to run. So add a new field for the newest user script, and we'll get that passed through the constructor. And then finally, we'll update that script to reference our new user. So update that newest user property to be our new user that will sign up. And then finally, we want to run the newest user script at the end of our sign up script. So let's try this out now. Should work just as expected. Whoops, forgot to update our program.cs. So we're gonna have to instantiate the newest user script. So instantiate that here and pass that into the sign up script. So now we should be able to run this. So let's sign up and we should see our users printed as well as our newest user. And if we sign up again, let's change this to a different email. We should see both of our users get printed in the user script and then our newest user get printed as well. So this is all working as expected. The only issue is that it wasn't really straightforward to extend. So we successfully created this newest user script. That was pretty straightforward. But integrating that into the rest of our application was pretty invasive. 
So we have to go into this existing signup script and directly reference our newest user script, update the state on that script, and also run the script. So currently this isn't really scalable. What if we had 10 scripts of information to run after this signup script? Then we'd have to take in those 10 scripts through the constructor and then directly run all of them and directly reference those scripts. And then even more, what if we had another script in addition to the signup script, something like an update email script, where we would also want to rerun our list user script and newest user script. Then we would also have to make sure that we run any other scripts that we add here in the future. So ultimately we have pretty tight coupling between our signup script and our other scripts. And it's proven to be quite invasive to add support for more scripts since we have this coupling. And if we had more scripts, this could end up being a spaghetti mess kind of. So this is where the mediator pattern is going to save us. So we're gonna decouple the signup script from all of these other scripts that we wanna run after sign up, or really that we wanna run after any user state change in our application. So finally, let's create our mediator. So in our project, I'm gonna add a new folder. We'll just call this folder mediators. And inside here, we're gonna have our user mediator. So let's create that class, the user mediator. So create that. So getting back to the problem, we wanna decouple the communication between the signup script and our list user script and newest user script. So on our user mediator, we're gonna have a method to create a user. So we'll just call it create. It'll take in our user model. And the reason for that is because this signup script wants to tell the rest of our application that a new user has been created. So it's gonna use this create method in order to do that. So now let's look at the perspective of our list user script and our newest user script. So these scripts want to be told whenever a new user is created. So this listening behavior of these other scripts, we can represent that using a .NET event. So we're gonna have an event and we'll make this an action that takes in a user and we'll call this user created. So since this event type is an action for a user, then when we raise this, we'll pass in the user that was created and our list user script and newest user script will be able to take that user and do whatever they want with it. So whenever our signup script wants to create a user, then we'll raise the user created event. So we'll take that event and if it's not null, so it has subscribers, we'll invoke it, passing in the new user. And that'll tell the rest of our application and the other scripts about the new user. So now everything can flow through the user mediator and our scripts no longer have to directly reference each other. So now in the signup script, we're just gonna have a single field for the user mediator and get that passed through the constructor, removing the old constructor, no longer need that. So now no longer gonna be directly referencing these scripts. And now when we create a new user, we're just gonna take our user mediator and tell it to create our new user, which again, will raise our user created event that our other scripts are gonna wanna listen for. So now our list user script, it's gonna need the user mediator passed in. So let's get that as a field and get that passed through the constructor. And then it'll wanna subscribe to the user created event. So let's generate a method to subscribe to that. So this method that we subscribe with will receive the user that was created. And with that user, we just wanna add that to our list of users. And then we also wanna run our script. So in reality, we could make this run method private now, but I'm gonna leave it public because I was expecting to use it in other places, just calling it on its own. But then this add user method down here, we actually no longer need that because that was just used in the sign up script because we wanted to add the new user. But now we no longer need that and that actually provides better encapsulation on this user's list. So nothing can just take this script and add a new user willy-nilly whenever it wants to. Instead, it'll have to go through the user mediator. So let me move this private method to the bottom down here. And another thing I wanna call out is we're subscribing to this user mediator. And I expect this user mediator is gonna live the lifetime of the application. And in reality, so is this list user script as well. But we should really dispose of this event subscription 
so that we don't risk memory leaks. So let's make this script an I disposable and implement dispose and then do the unsubscription here using a minus equals and just passing in that method reference. So this should be enough to test out the list user script. So in our program.cs, let's set this up. So we wanna instantiate our user mediator now. So instantiate that and pass that into the list user script, which now needs it, as well as the signup script. And then also our list user script, as we recall, needs to be disposed now. So at the end of our application, let's take that script and dispose it. So what are we waiting for? Let's test this out. I'll throw down some breakpoints in the key spots. So let's sign up, put in a fake email, and here we go. We're gonna create our new user. So we're gonna pass that to the user mediator. So let's step into that, and that's gonna raise our user created event. So let's raise that, and that gets handled in our list user script, which subscribed to that event. So now we're gonna add the new user, and run the script and print out all of the users and turns out just as expected. The only difference is that now our signup script isn't directly referencing our other scripts and we've decoupled them by communicating through the mediator. So now this will be easy to extend to support our newest user script and we won't have to create a spaghetti mess or really even touch at all this signup script. So let's move over to the newest user script and all of our changes are gonna be consolidated to the script. So we're gonna get our user mediator passed through the constructor. So let's put a field for that and get that injected in. And then same thing as the list user script, we wanna subscribe to the user mediator, user created event. So let's subscribe to that, generate a method for our subscription. And now in this handler, all we're gonna do is update the newest user to be our new user that was just created and then run the script and then same thing with the list user script we want to dispose of this event subscription so let's implement i disposable and just do our unsubscription down here so minus equals and now this script should be ready to test as well so whenever a user is created update the newest user and run the script so let's move into our program.cs and update this so pass in the user mediator to the newest user script and then dispose the newest user script at the end of our application. So let's run this. We extended our application without even touching the sign up script and just going through the mediator to communicate. So let's sign up, put in our fake email and we should see both our list user script and our newest user script run perfectly. So let's make sure this works for the newest user. Let's put in another email and this should be the newest user now which it is successfully so one thing i want to call out before wrapping up is that all of your objects that you're trying to communicate with will of course need to reference the same mediator instance so for example if we have other user mediator here so now we've instantiated two mediators and then our list user script references other user mediator then it's not going to run the script because our signup script is gonna raise the event on our user mediator instance. So if we run this, our list user script is not going to run. So as we see, we only ran the newest user script because it's using the same mediator instance that the signup script is using. So make sure you're sharing the correct mediator for the objects that you wanna communicate with. Another thing we could do is we could extend this user mediator to store state as well. So right now our list user script stores the users that we've created, but we could certainly move this state into the user mediator as well. So for example, we could take our user mediator, have a list of users in here, instantiate those users in the constructor. So instantiate a new list of users, and then we could expose these users as just an I enumerable for encapsulation so that if we wanna add users to this list, we'll have to go through the create method, which we want. So expose our users, as an I enumerable and point to our users field. And then when we create a user, we'll take our users list and add the new user. And then back to our list user script, we could remove the internal users list in here. And then when we iterate over all of the users, we'll just take our user mediator and iterate over the user state that's stored within the mediator. And then when we get that user created event raised on the mediator, we'll simply just run 
our script, which will grab the state from the user mediator now. So let's run this. This will work just as expected. So sign up and our user mediator now has our user stored on it. And we just grab those from the mediator and print them out, which is nice because now not only is communication between objects centralized in our user mediator, but so is critical state for our application, which we wouldn't really want to duplicate throughout our app. It's nice to have that centralized in one spot so that our state doesn't get out of sync throughout our application. So this pattern that I have going on here with our state centralized and this communication with events, this is a pretty common pattern that I implement in WPF applications and really any front end application. And I have more videos on that where I go more in depth with those use cases as well. So I'll put videos on those topics in a card or in a link in the description. But just to summarize, we leverage the mediator pattern to decouple communication between our scripts and make our application more extendable for communicating between objects. So hopefully you can apply the mediator pattern to your own applications. But aside from that, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave those below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.